Copyright of this video belongs to CA Campus. Offenders will be prosecuted. In this recording, we will be discussing how to reference your R4 standards effectively. I'm Bianca Nell, the Financial Accounting Lecturer at CA Campus. The aim of this recording is to provide you with a guidance on how to start referencing your R4 standards. Why is this important? Remember, in your CTA exam, ITC, as well as APC exam, that you will be allowed to take in your RFRS textbooks. Therefore, you need to know how to use them throughout the test and the exam. Now, when and why will you use your RFRS standards? First, you will use them during your studies. Then, when you enter the professional career, you will use them as well. Why will you use them during your professional career? There will be certain transactions that you encounter and you should be able to go back to your standard and read and understand what you are reading on how to account for these transactions. Therefore, it's important during your studies that you learn how to use your RFRS standards. The biggest problem that we have identified is that students think they can go into an exam and open and look for something that they have never studied or read before. The main thing this year, you need to study the principles first. You need to study the principles and then in an exam, your textbook should actually work for you, not against you. Now, what do I mean by working for you? Why do you need to use your RFRS textbook during an exam? Let's quickly think about this. Either to reference to an applicable paragraph or to confirm certain information. Why do you need to confirm certain information? During the exam, the pressure is quite high and you might forget something. Yes, you have studied it. However, you might forget how to apply it. Then you are able to go back to that applicable standard and briefly read through them. Then thirdly, important, your presentation as well as your disclosure. Now, what is the difference between presentation and disclosure? Presentation will be to present the item, asset or liability on the face of your statement of financial position or in your profit and loss statement. Disclosure will be to disclose this in a note. Now, guys, let's be honest. There's quite a lot of standards. There's quite a lot of theory to study. It won't always be possible for you to remember all of the presentation and disclosures. And even if you think about this, going forward in your professional career, we have caseware, we have quite a lot of templates that is recently updated with the new RFRS rules. Therefore, this is open book and you are able to view how to present and how to disclose a certain asset or liability. I want to emphasize your RFRS standards are there to assist you in an exam. It's important that you know that you have to study the principles first and then you need to ensure that your standards are referenced effectively for you to be able to use and refer to as quickly as possible during your writing time of an exam. Now, how do we start? Where do we start? Remember that you are allowed to flag, and this is important guys, you are allowed to flag your RFRS textbook you are allowed to underline, sideline, and to highlight. Now, before we start, let's think about this. This isn't a coloring in competition. This is your actual textbook. You're going to use this for the following five, six years. Therefore, you need to ensure that you do this properly, that you want to look at this textbook at the end of this year and that you still want to use the, book, the textbook. Therefore, you need to plan briefly a structure. How are you going to reference your textbook? The first thing that I will do if I'm you is think about what is included in each standard. Normally, we will include a scope. There will be how to measure the transaction how to recognize the transaction, there will be presentation, and there will be disclosure. So this will be the criteria that will be included in most of the standards. Now guys, I quickly want to explain to you what is measurement again. 
Measurement will be how do you calculate a certain amount. So this will be how to calculate an amount. Recognition will be how do you recognize the asset or liability, that transaction, into the annual financial statements through journal entries. We need to ensure that we understand the words that they use in IFRS standards. Therefore, recognition will be how to debit or credit and what account do we use. Now guys, if we quickly think about this, my first thing that I will do is I will identify colors that I want to use. For example, I will use yellow to write on the flag that this will be IS1. Then the next thing that is very important to me will be my presentation and my disclosure. Why is this important? I want to be able to quickly refer to how to present or how to disclose a certain note. Therefore, I will use another color, let's say for example, blue, and disclosure will be orange. And I will start flagging my standards. I will flag all of the yellow will be the actual name of the standard, IS1 and IS2 and so forth. Remember, this will be the actual name of the standard. Now the question, what are we allowed to write on our flags? You can only write on your flag what is written on the actual page. Therefore, these flags will not be crypt notes. You can't include the complete definition theory, all of your steps, and so forth. You can only write on the flags that you are able to read on that applicable page. Then it's easy for you if you know all of the yellow is the actual standard. And we've indicated that all of our blue will be our presentation. Therefore, I will include a P for presentation and a D for disclosure. Should it be that the requirement indicates that I need to disclose for example, the IS-16 note. It's easy for me to open this flag and quickly view what I need to include in my disclosure and write that down on my page. We are also busy with our step number one. Within our step number one, you can identify that if there is theory, you will use green for all of the theory paragraphs. Therefore, when you start reading within the certain standard and there's an important theory paragraph or definition paragraph, you can use green. And you will know that your green is your theory definition. For example, if you want to use purple, you can use purple. But use a structure, guys. Otherwise, you're going to sit with orange, purple, green, 10,000 different colors and it's sort of difficult to know actually where you need to open, what is every color. Use a structure. Let me recap. The first will be our yellow, which is the actual name of the standard. Second, blue, which will be the presentation, disclosure. Fourth will be definitions and theory. And then let's, for example, use pink or red, actually, if you think about this. If there is a very important paragraph, that you tend to identify throughout the year in each and every single text. Then you know that this is the important paragraph. And then you can think about if there is something that you really do struggle with, that you know that this is basic, but you struggle with it. You can start with another color, but your colors should mean something to you. It might not mean anything to me, but it should mean something to you throughout the year. Remember, this is your textbook, and this textbook should work for you. The aim of this recording is to provide you with a guidance. However, I want you to open your R RFRS 16, and I will briefly explain how to use the actual standard. I'm not going to go into the detail of highlighting, referencing, underlining, and sidelining each paragraph. I want to discuss the contents page. This will be the first page that you see when you open your IFRS 16. This page provides you with history on IFRS 16. Remember, we had I-17, SIG-15, SIG-27, revised I-17 started, and IFRIC-4, and now we have IFRS 16. 
I do not want you to include a flag on this page. I want you to include your flag on the contents page. Why on the content page? It's important that during the exam, in the requirement, if you're unsure of what they actually want you to do, you can open your content page and briefly read through your content page to be able to identify the applicable paragraph. If you need to know how to measure in the lessees records, you will be able to identify that this is our measurement and you need to refer to paragraph 22. And immediately you can open paragraph 22. Then remember that you need to include your flagging of your presentation and disclosure. At SEA Campus, we will teach you how to read your IFRS standards. We will prepare you for your career and most important, prepare you for your exams. If you are interested in learning more, you are welcome to register for our free week at no obligation. You can send an email to info at cacampus.co.za. Thank you and good luck with your CTA year.